Good morning students. We are discussing on pavement design and highway construction. Here we are talking for the construction of the flexible pavement. Okay, in this lecture we will see how to construct the drainage layer, what are the method of uh, providing the drainage in the flexible pavement. Okay, so starting the lecture with the drainage layer construction. This is the general construction of the drainage in the pavement layers okay during the rains part of the rainwater flows on the surface and the part of it percolates through the soil mass as the gravitational water until it reaches the groundwater below the water table so to remove such waters to divert this water the drainage is required in the construction of the pavement so this drainage can be provided as a surface drainage or it can be the subsurface drainage well if we talk about the methods of surface drainage okay we have the by longitudinal side drains and we can provide it by catch basins and inlet in the urban areas okay now so if we talk about the subsurface drainage we have three different methods that is lowering the water table controlling the seepage flow as well as we can controlling it by capillary waters okay so let's discuss the surface drainage layer construction okay so first that is by longitudinal side drains the longitudinal side drains have some sub patterns that side drains for the road in the embankment okay in this method when the road is constructed on the embankment it is necessary to provide the side drain on one side or the both side also we have uh, many times seen that besides the pavement edges there are the drainage open drainage is provided throughout the surface okay those are the longitudinal drain okay such side drains should be constructed at least two meter away from the bottom edge of the embankment and the depth of side drain is kept around 1 to 1.5 meter to prevent the entry of the drain water into the embankment as here in the figure that is shown that that particular depth is considered as 1 to 1.5 meter and that particular drain is at almost 2 meter from the edge of the embankment okay this is the bottom edge of the embankment and from here this drainage should be constructed at least so that the minimum distance is 2 meter okay so this is how we can uh, provide the drainage okay this is called as a side drain and this is also a longitudinal drain next is the side drainage for the road that comes into the cutting portion so the next that is side drain for the road in the cutting now when the road is constructed in cutting side drains are provided on either side of the road okay the drain should not overflow in any circumstances the closed side drains are preferred as open and deep side drains are very dangerous where the space is limited okay so so generally the closed drains are preferred in such cases the covered drains of drainage trenches properly filled with the layers of coarse sand and gravel may be used coarse gravel layers are provided at the bottom of the drain surface the next available thing that is the catch basins and you can also provide inlet in the urban areas okay sometime in our societies uh, we observe such case, uh, catch basins wherein uh, the all uh, unnecessary water uh, flows into that particular basin 
and the basin is connected with the severe line in urban roads because of the limitation of land width and also due to the presence of footpath it is necessary to provide underground longitudinal drains catch basin is a structure that is like a camber constructed on the severe line water from pavement surface is collected in the catch basin and then it get discharged to the severe drain the catch basin is provided with ratting to prevent the entry of rubbish into the drainage system here the impurities in the water collected at the bottom of the catch basin which is to be cleaned regularly and a hood is provided in the catch basins to prevent the entry of severe gas into the catch basin so here you can see the impurities is collected over here and they have provided a hood so that that bad odor that bad smell cannot come into the catch basins okay the next provision that is the inlet now inlet is a structure constructed along the edge of the urban road to discharge the rain water into the storm water inlet is a concrete box with the grating either at the top or on the side if grading is horizontal it is considered as the horizontal inlet if the grading is vertical it is called as the vertical inlet or the curve inlet here in the figure you can see this is the inlet okay where in the water is coming from the vertical portion so this is called as the vertical inlet and here the water is coming from this horizontal uh, gratings so this is considered as the horizontal inlet here also the storm water is collected to the severe line so this was all about the surface drainage now if we talk about the method of subsurface drainage the removal or the diversion of excessive soil water from the subgrade is termed as the subsurface drainage okay this in the subsurface drainage the water that is on the surface area that should be removed where in the subsurface drainage the unnecessary water the unnecessary thing that is into the pavement that has to be removed so that is known as the subsurface drainage the subsurface drainage is necessary because when the road is in the cutting and water seeping from the sides such drainage should be provided also when the road is near to the foot of hill and is likely to be damaged by water the flowing down the hill that is flowing down the hill that should be removed otherwise it will damage the road or it will cause the failure of the pavement also when the road is passing through the plain area and water is likely to be accumulated on the sides where subsurface drainage is necessary also where the water rises up to the subgrade by the capillary action and it is affected by the drain that is passing near the road at such areas also in such situation also subsurface drainage is mandatory so if we talk about the methods we have earlier discussed that there are three different provisions three different method to provide the subsurface drainage the first is by lowering the water level by controlling the seepage flow and by controlling the capillary water okay so starting with the first one that is lowering of water table the highest level of water table should be fairly below the level of subgrade in order that the subgrade and the pavement layers are not subjected to excessive moisture the water table should be kept at least 1 to 1.2 meter below the subgrade in places where water table is high the best remedy is to be taken to the road formulation on the embankment of the height that is not less than 1 to 1.2 meter when the formation is to be at or below 
the general ground level it would be necessary to lower the water table well if the soil is relatively permeable it may be possible to lower the high water table by constructing the longitudinal drains with drain pipe and filter sand here in the figure we can see the longitudinal drain pipe that is provided throughout the pavement surface in the longitudinal direction the top of the trench is covered with the clay soil and the depth of the trench depend on the required lowering water table the distance between the drainage trenches and the type of soils now if the soil is relatively less permeable the lowering of the ground water table may not be adequate at the center of the pavement hence in addition transfer drain may have to be provided in order to effectively drain off the water and thus to lower the water table the transfer drains are provided that should be at the spacing of 6 to 20 meter and at the slope of 1 is to 5 from center to the edge of the road the next method that is by controlling the seepage flow so when the general ground as well as the impervious strata below are sloping seepage flow is likely to be exist if the seepage zone is at the depth less than 0.6 to 0.9 meter from the subgrade level the longitudinal pipe drain in the trench filled with the filter material and clay seal may be constructed to intercept the seepage flow the figure shows the method by which the seepage line can be lowered to the desired depth so the last but not the least the method of controlling the subsurface drainage by capillary water in this method instead of lowering the water table capillary rise is arrested by following few methods wherein a layer of granular material of suitable thickness is provided during the construction of the embankment and that should be between the subgrade and the highest level of the subsurface water table here the thickness of the granular capillary cutoff layer should be sufficiently higher than the anticipated capillary rise within the granular layer so that the capillary water can not rise above the cutoff layer so here you can see the granular material okay so this is the maximum layer layer where the sub base layer is constructed okay so till that they have provided a barrier so that that particular water cannot rise from that particular area the next that is the another method of providing the capillary cut off is by inserting an impermeable layer or the bituminous layer in the place of granular banquet so wherever we are providing the sub base cores at that particular layer we are adding one more layer that could be impermeable layer or that could be the bituminous layer so that that capillary rise that water will not enter from that particular layer okay so this is how we can uh, provide the subsurface drainage with that i am concluding this lecture i hope student you understand the topic thoroughly thank you so much for your kind attention we'll see you in the next lecture